Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about corner detection. Well, to talk about corner detection, first of all, we need to understand what is a corner. Actually, corner is a point where two edges meet. So at corner, we find rapid changes in the image intensity in two directions, that is x-axis and y-axis. For example, we can see that this is a flat region. This image is representing an edge, a diagonal edge. And this image is representing that there is a corner. So if we want to find the corner, we will uh, handle these three different images. And we will determine that how these three images will behave differently. So in the first step, if we want to find a corner, we will uh, calculate the gradients. We will calculate the gradient along x-axis and we will calculate the gradient against y-axis. So once we calculate the gradients of these three shapes, we will find that since there is no edge, there is no uh, gray level changes. So the gradient will be a blank or we can say a gray level image. There will be no sharp changes in intensity. However, for an image where there is an edge, uh, diagonal edge, we will find a sharp gradient. This area will be represented if you're talking about binary images, the, the, these regions will be black or gray, but this region will be white. White is representing very high intensity. So this will be a sharp edge uh, if we take the derivative. And similarly for the corner, if we are taking the derivative with respect to x-axis, we will get uh, a high intensity in this direction for this uh, edge. And when we take the derivative along y-axis, we will again uh, for this uh, corner or this uh, edge, we will get against a high intensity in this uh, case. So similarly, if we look at the y-axis gradient of this edge, we, we are getting uh, this uh, high intensity because you know this edge is diagonal. So it has got uh, two components. It has got uh, x component and a y component. So we can take uh, the gradient about both these axes and there is a change along both the directions. If it had been uh, maybe a horizontal edge or a vertical edge, then there would have been changes only in uh, one gradient, not in both gradients. So in the first step, we have only calculated the gradients. So now let's move to the second step. In the second step, we will make distributions of these gradients. So if we want to may, may, uh, form distributions of these gradients, we will form x-axis and y-axis. On x-axis, we are placing the values of uh, the x-gradient and on y-axis, we are placing the value of y-gradients. So we will place all the gradients which we have calculated for the flat region. You can see that there is no uh, strong gradient found for a flat region. So all the values that we are found, they are going to be lying on zero or on origin. If we talk about this uh, image where we had calculated a gradient for an edge, so we can see that we are going to get a lot of values uh, uh, on the center because these values are representing these uh, flat regions where there is no change. So these are zero values. So we are getting some zero values, but we are getting a spread of values along this axis because there is a lot of uh, gradients or a lot of intensity points which we are getting al along um, ix and iy both so we will get a lot of points along this axis which are actually representing this edge if it had been a horizontal edge all the values would have been lying on x axis uh, sorry on y axis and if it had been a vertical edge all the values would have been lying along the x axis because you know for a, a horizontal edge all the changes along y axis and for a vertical edge all the changes along the x axis but since i have taken a diagonal edge so the values are being spread along the diagonal uh, axis now coming over to the corner for the corner we are again getting some values in the center but we are getting uh, a lot of values around around this axis and a lot of values around this axis so on both the axis with whether it is x axis or y axis well we can see that uh, this distribution is actually getting all the points along this axis because you know all these points are actually all the points uh, all the gradients from this point they have strong gradients about this and strong gradients about this like they have strong uh, ix gradients and they have strong iy gradients 
that is why all these points are lying in the middle of ix and iy but we when we talk about this edge uh, this corner right so for this corner if we consider this gradient which is ix so this is a very uh, these points are very strong uh, ix gradient but they have minimal iy gradient this is actually representing you know this line it is a vertical line so for a vertical line i y is almost zero so you know you are getting points over here where i y is almost zero and you are getting points over here as well because these points are representing that i x is almost zero so what are these points representing these points are representing actually this you know sort of a horizontal line because uh, this sort of a horizontal line slightly horizontal line is actually having an ix almost zero so that is why for a corner i'm getting points uh, here i'm getting points here in the same this very step we are going to put some we are going to fit some ellipses so i'm going to fit an ellipse like this i'm going to fit a circle like this i'm going to fit a circle like this and i'm going to say that this is lambda 2 this is lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 1. I have just represented them with lambdas uh, 1 and 2. Uh, now in the third step, I am going to analyze these lambdas, lambda 1 and lambda 2. So I would say, you can see the same thing here in the image. This is lambda 1 and lambda 2. Against it, we have got this plot. And wherever this, um, the R that we have calculated with the help of lambda 1 and lambda 2, uh, whenever it is larger than that, that threshold, we say that it's a corner. And whenever it's smaller than, than that threshold, we say that it's not a corner. Uh, we can also say that uh, one of the lambda is, of course, going to be uh, minimum and one of the lambda is going to be maximum. So when even the minimum value is larger than threshold, when even the smallest value of lambda whichever is small it can be one it can be two so whichever is small when the even the smallest value is larger than threshold then it's a corner but if the smallest value is large is smaller than threshold of course the maximum value may be uh, larger than threshold but since the minimum values are criteria the minimum values are criteria if it is smaller than threshold we say that it is not a corner it might be an edge okay of course but it is not a corner so the criteria that we set to compare with threshold is our lambda minimum uh, for example there is an image bbc written so if you know i calculate the gradients and if i uh, calculate the lambda one and lambda two so after that we i can find these corners of the image on all these values i'm going to get bright pixels right i'm going to get bright pixels the last step that we have to perform uh, in corner detection is non-maximum suppression because we have to find out the peaks and we have to find out the local maximas all those points which are local maximas or which are the highest amongst other highest because sometimes you get multiple you know you get multiple points of high intensity so among those multiple points of high intensities you have to find the peak or the local maxima so for this we use the very common technique of non-maximum suppression uh, well what is non-maximum suppression it is basically sliding a window over an image and at each point if pixel at the center uh, is maximum value then we keep it else we suppress it for example we have this window and we are sliding it over the image uh, now this is the pixel of the image right for example this window was placed somewhere like this somewhere like this so in the center if this the center of the window is coinciding with this so you see this is one this is zero this is zero and this is uh, zero so uh, this is uh, of course uh, you know a local maxima or it's a high value so we are going to keep this pixel we are going to keep this pixel we will tick mark it we will keep it now i am sliding the window further and there is a point uh, this point zero zero is coinciding with the center of this window so see this zero is a smaller value there are other values in the neighborhood which are higher than this zero so will i keep this pixel so i would say in a situation where lambda 2 and lambda 1 is almost zero and it is a very small value so it represents a flat region 
where lambda uh, 1 is larger than lambda 2 or we can uh, yeah lambda 1 is larger than lambda 2 we can say that it is an edge right lambda 1 is large and lambda 2 is small it could have been otherwise uh, it could have been like lambda 1 is small and lambda 2 is large still the values are different so it is an edge and uh, the third case because lambda 1 is almost equal to lambda 2 and it is quite large you can see it was pretty small and it is quite large so this is a corner so this is how I have analyzed my lambdas now uh, I can also make this figure uh, if this axis is representing lambda 1 and if this y axis is representing lambda 2 so I can say that for all uh, the vertical edges lambda 1 is going to be larger than lambda 2 and all horizontal edges lambda 2 is going to be larger than lambda 1 I already explained that for edges these two lambdas are different from each other and if it is a corner and or if it is a flat region both the lambdas are equal to one another it's just the difference that here these values are very large and here these values are small so this is how on the basis of these lambda 1s and lambda 2s we got to analyze them and we got to decide okay whether the image has an edge or a flat or a corner let's uh, now relate this uh, analysis with Harris operator so in Harris operator what uh, additional thing Harris has done is actually Harris operator uh, calculates a value of R where lambda 1 is multiplied with lambda 2 minus k and lambda 1 is lam added with lambda 2 and whole square this R is calculated and this R is actually compared with a threshold so when this r is uh, smaller than threshold we say that it is not a corner and when it is larger than threshold we say that it's a corner so in this way we apply non-maximum suppression and with the help of this we find out the peaks and local maximas and uh, the actual corners are uh, calculated and these extra points from the corners will be eliminated so this is how we are going to do the corner detection if you like this video do subscribe and like it Thank you, Alaphis.